podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. The L. Max Gardner Award was established to recognize University of North Carolina system faculty who have made the greatest contributions to the welfare of the human race. It is the only award for which all faculty members of the 17 UNC campuses are eligible and is considered the UNC system's highest faculty honor. Producer Derek Long introduces us to this year's winner. The University of North Carolina, years ago, in 1949, established uh, an award, the O. Max Gardner Award, uh, that is offered to uh, individuals that have made the greatest difference in the welfare of the human race. It's, it's not just about uh, a faculty member's contribution in the classroom. It's not just about a faculty member's research, although those are very, very important and deserving of recognition. Instead, it's, it's about identifying faculty members that have really changed people's lives. This year's award winner, Dr. Diane Browder at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, is one of those people. Dr. Diane Browder was already a thought leader in the field of special education when she was recruited to UNC Charlotte in 1998 to become the Lake and Edward J. Snyder Distinguished Professor of Special Education. I think she's really the model of the engaged scholar. Uh, she understands at a deep level the problems of teaching disabled children, severely disabled children. She designed a curriculum to address that need. She taught the teachers how to deliver that curriculum and then she designed research to evaluate the effectiveness of it. One of the reasons I've been able to do the work that I do is because I'm in the context of a strong college of education. I have outstanding colleagues in special education with whom to collaborate and so I can learn from their depth of experience and I think that's one of the things that's made us uniquely poised to be able to do some of the groundbreaking work that occurred here at University of North Carolina at Charlotte for students with severe disabilities is because we are situated in the context of a strong group of educators broadly in this college. I think one of the things that is so exciting about the research, research that's going on right now across the nation, but specifically here at UNC Charlotte, is that we are really expanding the boundaries of what we know is possible with students with severe disabilities. Dr. Browder's work in pushing the boundaries of this population of children and their ability to learn has been called transformative changing the educational expectations for children with severe disabilities. For a long time, we as a profession and we as a society have defined uh, children with significant intellectual needs as by what they can't do rather than what they can do. Dr. Browder has asked us to look again. And in fact, her elegant, rigorous research has shown us that we've set our expectations too low. In 1975, we had a, a new federal um, act passed. It was the Education for All Handicapped Children Act. And it, it brought uh, children out of institutions, it brought children out of bedrooms, and it brought children out of attics. And, and they were permitted to be in the public schools for the first time. And we really thought at that time that many of these children were uneducable. But Diane's work really has made a major shift in how we think about the abilities and capabilities of children with significant cognitive disabilities. Dr. Browder credits her partnership with the Charlotte Mecklenburg School System and working with teachers in the classroom for the success of her work. The Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools has really uh, served as her laboratory. Uh, we've had the great honor of having our students and our teachers and our families uh, participate in all of her research studies and the results, of course, have been phenomenal for uh, this particular group of children. We all believe that students can learn at high levels. What Diane does is take and makes that doable and replicable in lots of classrooms with lots of kids and lots of teachers. The brilliance of Diane is the fact that she really listens. When teachers say, I can't do that because that takes too much time, I can't adapt curriculum because that takes too much time. Diane listens to that and figures out a way to make that doable 
for the classroom teacher. I don't think she's ever lost sight of what it means to teach kids in a classroom. The other half of the, of the equation then is we give the person with severe disabilities a way to show what they know, a way of showing understanding. And so the person might respond by pointing to a picture or they might pick between a couple of objects. I was a teacher in the classroom and had the opportunity to work on a grant that Diane was funded uh, for and she worked with me as a teacher in the classroom and I immediately saw the impact that her research has on students and their learning and on teachers and their growth in learning how to teach students with significant disabilities. What makes it unique is we put it into the very specific lessons, um, published curricula and scripted lessons that are easy for someone to replicate with a minimal of training because they can follow the guidelines and, and do this type of teaching. We want to show real student learning. We don't just want the student present while science is going on or a read aloud is going on. We want the student showing learning and that happens. But what we'd also like to have is we like the student and the teacher to be excited about that learning. That's when I realized we really have discovered something important here, something that's going to change the lives of students with severe disabilities because they're going to be able to show other people their competence, their ability in ways that we never thought were possible. This is the award that talks about the impact of that work and the impact that makes the lives of our citizens better lives. So it's an astonishing recognition of a courageous and talented and innovative faculty member. I think it also matches who Diane Browder is as a person, that her, her efforts are, are driven by a sense of moral and ethical responsibility, uh, driven by a sense of the humanity of people with significant disabilities. And for that reason, the award matches her and her work in really fine ways. I'm also especially pleased that the award was given for research done on behalf of students with severe developmental disabilities. I think that makes a strong statement about the University of North Carolina system and what we value, and that we value all people and we value all learners. And I'm really proud to be a part of a system that has those values. Dr. Browder was presented the award at a ceremony last Friday. Special thanks to Dr. Bruce Frazier of Western Carolina University and his students, Andrew Broom, Randall Harris, Clay Miller, and Ann Swamblant, who composed the music for the segment. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.